The Indo-European languages are a family of several hundred related languages and dialects. There are about 445 living Indo-European languages, according to the estimate by Ethnologue, with over two-thirds of them belonging to the Indo-Iranian branch alone. The Indo-European family includes most major current languages of Europe and parts of Western, Central and South Asia. It was also predominant in ancient Anatolia and the ancient Harem Basin and most of Central Asia until the invasion and migrations of Turkic speakers, especially during the Mongol-Turkic conquest in the 13th century with written attestations appearing since the Bronze Age in the form of the Anatolian languages and Mycenaean Greek. The Indo-European family is significant to the field of historical linguistics as possessing the second longest recorded history, after the Afroasiatic family. Several disputed proposals link Indo-European to other major language families. Etymology Thomas Young coined the term Indo-European in 1813 from Indo plus European after the geographical extremes of the language family from Western Europe to Northeast India. History of Indo-European Linguistics In the 16th century, European visitors to the Indian subcontinent began to suggest similarities among Indo-Aryan, Iranian, and European languages. In 1583, English Jesuit missionary Thomas Stevens in Goa wrote a letter to his brother, in which he noted similarities between Indian languages and Greek and Latin. Another account to mention the ancient language Sanskrit came from Filippo Sassetti, a merchant born in Florence in 1540 who traveled to the Indian subcontinent. Writing in 1585, he noted some word similarities between Sanskrit and Italian. However, neither Stevens's nor Sassetti's observations led to further scholarly inquiry. In 1647, Dutch linguist and scholar Marcus Zuerius van Boxhorn noted the similarity among Indo-European languages and supposed that they were derived from a primitive common language which he called Scythian. He included in his hypothesis Dutch, Albanian, Greek, Latin, Persian, and German, later adding Slavic, Celtic, and Baltic languages. However, Van Boxhorn's suggestions did not become widely known and did not stimulate further research. Ottoman Turkish traveler Evliya Çelebi visited Vienna in 1665-1666 as a part of a diplomatic mission and noted a few similarities between words in German and in Persian. Gaston Kurdu and others made observations of the same type. Kurdu made a thorough comparison of Sanskrit, Latin, and Greek conjugations in the late 1760s to suggest a relationship among them. Similarly, Mikhail Lomonosov compared different language groups, including Slavic, Baltic, Iranian, Finnish, Chinese, Hottentot, and others. He emphatically expressed the antiquity of the linguistic stages accessible to comparative method in the drafts for his Russian grammar. The hypothesis reappeared in 1786 when Sir William Jones first lectured on the striking similarities among three of the oldest languages known in his time, Latin, Greek, and Sanskrit, to which he tentatively added Gothic, Celtic, and Persian, though his classification contained some inaccuracies and omissions. Thomas Young first used the term Indo-European in 1813, which became the standard scientific term through the work of Franz Bopp, whose systematic comparison of these and other old languages supported the hypothesis. A synonym for Indo-European, Indo-Germanic, defines the family by specifying its southeast and most and northwest in most branches. In most languages, this term is dated or less common, whereas in German it remains the standard scientific term. Advocates of Indo-Germanic see the term Indo-European as misleading because many historic and several living European languages do not belong to this family. Advocates of Indo-European regard Indo-Germanic as misleading because many of the European languages included are not in fact Germanic. 
Franz Bopp's comparative grammar appeared between 1833 and 1852 and marks the beginning of Indo-European studies as an academic discipline. The classical phase of Indo-European comparative linguistics leads from this work to August Schleicher's 1861 compendium and up to Karl Bergmann's Grundriss, published in the 1880s. Bergman's Jung grammatische Reevaluation of the Field and Ferdinand de Sauch's development of the laryngeal theory may be considered the beginning of modern Indo-European studies. The generation of Indo-Europeanists active in the last third of the 20th century developed a better understanding of morphology and of ablaut in the wake of Kurilevich's 1956 apophony classification. The various subgroups of the Indo-European language family include ten major branches, given in the chronological order of their emergence according to David Antony, Anatolian, the earliest attested branch, emerged around 4200 BC. Isolated terms in Lewin, Hittite mentioned in Semitic Old Assyrian texts from the 20th and 19th centuries BC. Hittite texts from about 1650 BC, extinct by late antiquity. Tocharian, emerged around 3700 BC, extant in two dialects, attested from roughly the 6th to the 9th century AD, marginalized by the old Turkic Ughurkaganate and probably extinct by the 10th century. Germanic, emerged around 3300 BC, earliest testimonies in runic inscriptions from around the 2nd century AD, earliest coherent texts in Gothic, 4th century AD, Old English manuscript tradition from about the 8th century AD, Italic, including Latin and its descendants, emerged around 3000 BC, attested from the 7th century BC, Celtic, descended from Proto-Celtic, emerged around 3000 BC, Lepontic inscriptions date as early as the 6th century BC, Celtiberian from the 2nd century BC, Primitive Irish Offham inscriptions from the 5th century AD, earliest inscriptions in Old Welsh from the 8th century AD, Armenian, emerged around 2800 BC, alphabet writings known from the beginning of the 5th century AD, Balto-Slavic, emerged around 2800 BC, believed by most Indo-Europeanists to form a phylogenetic unit while a minority ascribes similarities to prolonged language contact. Slavic, attested from the 9th century AD, earliest texts in Old Church Slavonic. Baltic, attested from the 14th century AD, for languages attested that late. They retain unusually many archaic features attributed to Proto-Indo-European. Hellenic, emerged around 2500 BC, fragmentary records in Mycenaean Greek from between 1450 and 1350 BC have been found. Homeric texts date to the 8th century BC. Indo-Iranian, emerged around 2200 BC, attested circa 1400 BC, descended from Proto-Indo-Iranian. Indo-Aryan, attested from around 1400 BC and Hittite texts from Asia Minor, showing traces of Indo-Aryan words, epigraphically from the 3rd century BC in the form of Prakrit. The Rig Veda is assumed to preserve intact records via oral tradition dating from about the mid-2nd millennium BC in the form of Vedic Sanskrit, Iranian or Iranic, attested from roughly 1000 BC in the form of Avastan, epigraphically from 520 BC in the form of Old Persian, Nuristani. Albanian, attested from the 14th century AD, Proto-Albanian language likely evolved from Paleo-Balkan predecessors. In addition to the classical ten branches listed above, several extinct and little-known languages have existed. Illyrian, possibly related to Mesopian Albanian, or both, Venetic shares several similarities with Latin and the Italic languages, but also has some affinities with other IE languages, especially Germanic and Celtic. Liburnian, 
doubtful affiliation, features shared with Venetic, Illyrian and Indo-Hittite, significant transition of the pre-Indo-European elements. Mesopian, not conclusively deciphered, Phrygian, language of the ancient Phrygians, Paeonian, extinct language once spoken north of Macedon, Thracian, possibly including Dacian, Dacian, possibly very close to Thracian, ancient Macedonian, proposed relationship to Greek, Ligurian, possibly close to or part of Celtic, Sicel, an ancient language spoken by the Sicils, one of the three indigenous tribes of Sicily. Proposed relationship to Latin or Proto-Illyrian at an earlier stage. Lusitanian, possibly related to Celtic, Ligurian, or Italic. Sumerian, possibly Iranic, Thracian, or Celtic. Grouping membership of these languages in the Indo-European language family is determined by genetic relationships meaning that all members are presumed descendants of a common ancestor, Proto-Indo-European. Membership in the various branches, groups and subgroups of Indo-European is also genetic, but here the defining factors are shared innovations among various languages, suggesting a common ancestor that split off from other Indo-European groups. For example, what makes the Germanic languages a branch of Indo-European is that much of their structure and phonology can be stated in rules that apply to all of them. Many of their common features are presumed innovations that took place in Proto-Germanic, the source of all the Germanic languages. Tree versus wave model The tree model is considered an appropriate representation of the genetic history of a language family if communities do not remain in contact after their languages have started to diverge. In this case, subgroups defined by shared innovations form a nested pattern. The tree model is not appropriate in cases where languages remain in contact as they diversify. In such cases subgroups may overlap, and the wave model is a more accurate representation. Most approaches to Indo-European subgrouping to date have assumed that the tree model is by and large valid for Indo-European. However, there is also a long tradition of wave model approaches. In addition to genetic changes, many of the early changes in Indo-European languages can be attributed to language contact. It has been asserted, for example, that many of the more striking features shared by Italic languages might well be aerial features. More certainly, very similar-looking alterations in the systems of long vowels in the West Germanic languages greatly post-date any possible notion of a proto-language innovation. In a similar vein, there are many similar innovations in Germanic and Balto-Slavic that are far more likely aerial features than traceable to a common proto-language, such as the uniform development of a high vowel before the bisyllabic resonance asterisk r, asterisk l, asterisk m, asterisk n, unique to these two groups among IE languages which is in agreement with the wave model. The Balkan Sprach Bund even features aerial convergence among members of very different branches, using an extension to the Ringer Warnow model of language evolution. Early IE was confirmed to have featured limited contact between distinct lineages, whereas only the Germanic subfamily exhibited a less tree-like behavior as it acquired some characteristics from neighbors early in its evolution rather than from its direct ancestors. The internal diversification of especially West Germanic is cited to have been radically non-tree-like. Proposed subgrouping specialists have postulated the existence of higher-order subgroups such as Italo-Celtic, Greco-Armenian, Greco-Aryan, and Balto-Slavo-Germanic. However, unlike the ten traditional branches, these are all controversial to a greater or lesser degree. The Italo-Celtic subgroup was at one point uncontroversial, considered by Antoine Mate to be even better established than Balto-Slavic. 
The main lines of evidence included the genitive suffix i, the superlative suffix enmo, the change of p to k before another k in the same word, and the subjunctive morpheme a. This evidence was prominently challenged by Calvert Watkins, but other, stronger evidence has since emerged. Evidence for a relationship between Greek and Armenian includes the regular change of the second laryngeal to a at the beginnings of words, as well as terms for woman and sheep. Greek and Indo-Iranian share innovations mainly in verbal morphology and patterns of nominal derivation. Relations have also been proposed between Phrygian and Greek, and between Thracian and Armenian. Some fundamental shared features, like the aorist having the perfect active particle s fixed to the stem, link this group closer to Anatolian languages and Tocharian. Shared features with Balto-Slavic languages, on the other hand, might be due to later contacts. The Indo-Hittite hypothesis proposes the Indo-European language family to consist of two main branches, one represented by the Anatolian languages and another branch encompassing all other Indo-European languages. Features that separate Anatolian from all other branches of Indo-European have been interpreted alternately as archaic debris or as innovations due to prolonged isolation. Points proffered in favor of the Indo-Hittite hypothesis are the Indo-European agricultural terminology in Anatolia and the preservation of laryngeals. However, in general this hypothesis is considered to attribute too much weight to the Anatolian evidence. According to another view, the Anatolian subgroup left the Indo-European parent language comparatively late approximately at the same time as Indo-Iranian and later than the Greek or Armenian divisions. A third view, especially prevalent in the so-called French School of Indo-European Studies, holds that extant similarities in non sassam languages in general, including Anatolian, might be due to their peripheral location in the Indo-European language area and early separation, rather than indicating a special ancestral relationship. Hans J. Satam and Centum languages the division of the Indo-European languages into a Satam versus a Centum group was devised by Peter von Bradker in his 1890 work, Concerning Method and Conclusions of Aryan Studies. In it, von Bradke described a division similar to that of Karl Bergmann's, saying that the original Aryans knew two kinds of guttural sounds the guttural or velar and palatal rows, each of which were aspirated and unaspirated. The velars were to be viewed as gutturals in a narrow sense, and considered pure K sounds. Palatals were often followed by labialization. This latter distinction led von Bradke to divide the palatal series into a group as aspirant and a pure K sound typified by the words satum and centum respectively. Rather than being entirely genetic, the grouping of satum languages is commonly inferred as an innovative change that occurred just once, and subsequently spread over a large cohesive territory or pi continuum that affected all but the peripheral areas. Courtland proposes the ancestors of Balts and Slavs took part in satimization and were then drawn into the Western Indo-European sphere. Suggested macrofamilies Some linguists propose that Indo-European languages form part of one of several hypothetical macrofamilies. However, these theories remain highly controversial, not being accepted by most linguists in the field. Some of smaller proposed macrofamilies are Pontic, postulated by John Carla Russo, which joins Indo-European with Northwest Caucasian, Indo-Uralic, joining Indo-European with Uralic. Other, greater proposed families including Indo-European languages, are Eurasiatic, a theory championed by Joseph Greenberg, Nostratic, comprising all or some of the Eurasiatic languages, as well as the Kartvelian, Uralic, Dravidian, Altaic, and Afroasiatic language families. Objections to such groupings are not based on any theoretical claim about the likely historical existence or non-existence of such macrofamilies. It is entirely reasonable to suppose that they might have existed.
The serious difficulty lies in identifying the details of actual relationships between language families, because it is very hard to find concrete evidence that transcends chance resemblance, or is not equally likely explained as being due to borrowing, because the signal-to-noise ratio in historical linguistics declines steadily over time. At great enough time depths it becomes open to reasonable doubt that it can even be possible to distinguish between signal and noise.